You say day, you say day, you say day, you say day, 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 like come on me, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents. Got a couple of things we're going to talk about today. I started this video. I'm glad I redid it because there were some things left in it that wasn't supposed to be in it. Uh oh. Oh, no, no, no. The things are out of it now. I, I just thought that I may have left it in it, but I realized I didn't leave it in it, so I didn't leave it in it, which means it ain't in it, so I ain't got to worry about it being in it. Who we got here? No, no, no. Nayo, we done heard y'all before. Uh-uh. No, tonight, we ain't doing no tonight either. Got to shuffle. I got to find a, I gotta find a spot because there's 200 songs in this thing, y'all. Okay, that's cameo candy. We ain't got time for no candy. No, I don't want to see nobody grabbing on no not don't want to see that. Sorry, not this time of night. I've got other things to do. If only you knew, Patty, you're gonna have to ask somebody else if they knew, because if only you knew. Brian McKnight, one last cry. I like you, Brian, but right music. <sighs> no, we done heard you, music, because this is where your grandma and your grandpa, your father and mother is sitting up there talking. Louis Armstrong. Ladies and gentlemen, I couldn't have picked a better song. Pay attention. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be sending a letter to the Department of Business Oversight. Now, my job was to create this and another letter today. Okay, so I'm going to let you know what I'm putting in the letter. Pay attention. This is for two homes, not one. So I'm going to let you know what I'm putting in the letter. And I'm going to let you know why I'm keeping it this simple. My hope is that you will try to do something similar along the same line. You'll see how I explain everything. Because remember, this is talking about the blue sky laws. So we're not talking about mortgage or foreclosure or any of that stuff in this letter because this organization doesn't deal with mortgages or foreclosures or any of that stuff. They only deal with securities. So that's why I'm only talking about securities. Okay, we list it to them. We tell them who it's from. I took that out. This was a number. I took that out because this is for California. For your state, the department that handles blue sky laws is going to be different. So what you're going to have to do Okay, that's how I got the name. I just copied and pasted. You're always copying and pasting. You just copying and pasting and pasting and copying because I'm a copying and pasting son of a... All righty then. Ladies and gentlemen, we did Blue Sky Laws, California. But I know I saw earlier that there was one for New York. So let's do uh, Oklahoma. Okay. I don't know how to spell Oklahoma. So I, I believe it was Oak. Let's see if it gives us Oklahoma. Well, we got Illinois, Blue Sky Laws. So we don't even need to put Oklahoma in there. Oaklawn, <laughs> Illinois. Okay. Blue Sky it in Oakland anyway. State Blue Sky Laws Regulation Document SEC Regulation Registration Blue Sky Laws. I have often written about state blue sky compliance issues, blah, blah, blah. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't need to know what the blue sky laws are. You just have to see Denver has their blue sky laws. Okay, nope, that's not Denver. That's not uh, Colorado. All right, we got Dougie Fresh in the background. He's singing about the play. All right, we let's do Florida. F L O R I D A. Florida Blue Sky Laws Regulation 506. It says, ladies and gentlemen. The modern iteration of Florida's Blue Sky Laws gives added authority to the state to investigate and enforce anti-fraud provisions of the statute. We need every resource and every option available to protect our citizens from another Bernie Madoff type scheme. State stated the Florida attorney at the time. Ladies and gentlemen, please understand that all states have Blue Sky Laws. And with all states, you can file a complaint. 
So let me go back to the California one because that's the only way you all are going to understand this. So I got to go back one more because I did twice. All right. But every state has a blue sky law. So let me, uh, I brought them to 27, but I do know that they should be about 22. Thank you, Doug. See, that's Dougie Fresh and the Get Fresh crew. Okay. They ain't doing, and they ain't said nothing. All right, now let's go to business oversight. Department of Business Oversight, the BDBO, the Diabolical Department of Business Oversight, and we're gonna click on file a complaint. Now, every last one of you on your websites, you're gonna have the same thing as I did on the video earlier. I'm gonna do it now. Pay attention, people. It involves you. If you have a mortgage, hey, guess what? <laughs> guess what? Somebody brought this to my attention today, and I said I was going to bring it to your attention because he, I didn't even get a chance to explain this part to him. You know what he said? Well, can I do it on my birth certificate? Can I do it on my Social Security being traded? And I told him, I said, you know what? I wasn't even talking along that line, but I tell you what, I'm going to do a video and let everybody know. So at the end of the video or middle of the video, whatever we do, we're going to talk about the different avenues which you can do that because we know that they're trading our interests on the market. Let's see if these companies are supposed to be who they are. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me um, show you guys what's going on. I volunteered to help a couple of people. And if they're listening to this video and if they take offense, that's too bad. No, no, pay attention. That's too bad because I don't have time for that. Okay. I volunteered to help them. They're in plights. They want my help. I told them, hey, guys, I have to take care of this first. These people come first. They were ahead of you. You, what you paid me for, I have done. And trust me, I did my job. I said, but you, what you want is for me to be full time and to help you with every response and every said so you could not possibly pay for that. It will cost you too much. I said, so what I'll do is when I get an opportunity, I will help. One person, I received an email and the email said, I finally got a chance to check my mailbox and this was all the stuff that was inside. Okay, that was today. The items were received since the 16th. Some of those listed a certain amount of time period for the person to respond. Okay, that time period will be up tomorrow. But then they sent me all of the stuff they just got in the mail. And so I simply had to tell them, I'm not looking at this until tomorrow. Because I'm not going to stop my life just because you decided to finally go check your mailbox. Okay, that's your responsibility. That's an executive decision on your part. That's your responsibility. But that's the type of pressure people put on me. And then people think I'm wrong if I sit up here and speak out about it. Okay? I don't appreciate that at all. And I don't, look, I don't care what you got going on in your life. I know you're stressed. I know you got this going on and that going on, Uncle Bob and Uncle Tom and Uncle Mary and Auntie Mama and Auntie Grandma and, and then Grandma Sissy and Grandma Annie Mae and then, then Sally and Minnie and Michael and they're all coming at you at once. And you, man, then you got bills and you got this coming up. Oh, and God, and guess what? You just had a hospital bill. Oh, man, and Uncle, Uncle Bob, he was just in an accident. I know. I know you're going through all of that. Don't take this the wrong way, people. That ain't got nothing to do with me. Okay, I'm not going to take on all of your stress, and you're not going to stress me out. And if you are relying on me to be your savior, then you're, you're looking to the wrong man. Uh, you needed to be back in 33 CE and watching that person being hung and strung up and beaten and whipped. And that's the person you should have been looking to because I'm not your savior. My name is not, hold on. Yeah, we're going to go here. Uh, let's open YouTube up just for a second. This is old. That's earlier today. I haven't refreshed it. I'm not going to refresh it because I want to do, I, I need to, I need to have you guys hear this. 
So I'm going to have to put y'all on pause. Oh, that's the wrong one. Let me open this up. If I hit that red button. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, as I said, for all of you, whether you're male, female, or in between in that transverse where you want to transgen this and transgen that, I don't give a what you do. I want to let all of you know, I am not your, hold on, let me get you the point. Save a hole. I am not your Captain Sable. Do not imagine it. Do not think it. The only way for me to bring it to your attention is to have my buddy and friend explain it to you, okay? That's the only way I could get it across to you. I am not here to be your savior. But you just know this and you know that. I don't give up what I know, people. That doesn't mean that you get to come take advantage of what I know and how I know it and why I got it and how I know it and when I got it and where I got it and why I got it. You don't get to do that. I told you all, I can't let you do that to me. And if it means that I'm going to have to personally ignore your calls, ignore your emails, or literally tell you off to your face, and nobody is there yet, <laughs> nobody is there yet, but you're getting there. You see, the one thing I tell people not to do, see, because what was happening is the people I was working with, they would read the mail from the court and then they would try to explain to me what the court said and what the court was doing and everything. And I would tell them, no, you can't do that. You can't interpret what the judge is saying. You don't have that right to do that. You don't study the law. Well, I have one person who's actually sending me case law that they think is going to help in their case. People, I don't need you to send me case law. I'm not going to look at that junk anyway because what you want to bring up is not what the appeal is about and it's not what's going to get the judge's attention. Do you people not understand? They are not following the law. So it doesn't matter how much you want to add this and add that. What matters is you got to follow the steps. You got to follow procedure because that's the only way we are finding that we can beat them. And we're not beating them all the time. Okay? I'm so glad you got that off your chest. Oh, no, it wasn't on my chest. Uh-uh, that was on my neck and my back. Okay? Sorry about that. Ray Charles, they trying to chain me down. Can you tell them what happens if one of us is chained? That's Ray, y'all. He going to let y'all know if one of us is chained, none of us are free. All right, let's talk about this document right here. The property located at, you put your address there. Both, if it's one, you say was purchased from private homeowners without or a private homeowner. With, you make it singular. I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm just going to read this document because I'm not doing it for you. I'm letting you know what I'm getting ready to do. Without the attachment of a mortgage, when you purchased the house originally, there was no mortgage attached to the property. The lady last Thursday proved that to all of you guys. There was no mortgage attached. Okay, so there is no, we're going to take your home if you don't pay us back. You understand? Okay, however, initially the properties were purchased as a result of two separate individual loans from financial institutions, the properties were acquired without security of collateral attachment based on credit score because your credit was your so-called credit was the collateral. We agreed because this is two people, husband and wife, to so many other, uh, excuse me, we agreed and it's supposed to be not that but as so many others do, I'll have to correct that later because I can't correct it now. I'll correct it now and I'll have to uncorrect all the changes I've been made in and that would, that would be horrible. To allow the financial institutions to invest our property in the market by treating, uh, trading. Let's get rid of that T. Don't know what's wrong with the voice recognition. Trading it as a mortgage-backed security. Placing our home as collateral for the risk of trading it, our property, on the market. In exchange for the financial institutions applying 
all of the interest and dividends do us, this is supposed to be D-U-E, to the loan received as evidenced by the mortgage. Remember, the mortgage is not on the home. The mortgage is only evidence of a loan, not on the home. The mortgage is not on the home, but you allowed your home to be mortgaged as collateral for the trading on the market. That's what you're saying. To this very day, we have not received what was promised, yet our properties continue to be traded on the market. And now they're claiming that they are owed more than we agree to be responsible for. These securities are traded, traded. These securities are traded. I'm going to have to do that again so because I can't. Let's see. What's wrong with you? I'm, I am going to have to go back and correct it. It ain't letting me correct it. Okay. Well, forget you then. All right. Oh, that's why. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. These securities are traded by institutions and organizations regulated by your organization. And we must now request that you halt and or call the security associated with our properties. And we must request, as we have the right to have a full audit done respecting the securitization of the accounts, we believe you call this a margin call. As you will see by the agreement for allowing our properties to be traded, it did it right that time, on the market, we are included as investors or trust interest holders. Our properties is listed with the county recorder and the tax assessor's office as income property. Yet we are not receiving the benefits of this, but we are paying the taxes on the income property in violation of the agreement. Now, we have tried to communicate with the securitization trustee, but the trustee has ignored us. We have made several calls to the securitization trustee's office and the securitization trustee has not returned our calls and or any of the mail, M-A-I-L, sorry, communications to that office. What you say next, honey? We are contacting your office through the EM Foundation. You can't contact them through the EM Foundation. Use that name. That is a registered name. Do not play with me. Because your office is the office who oversees the regulating of such entities. And we are asking that an investigation commence immediately. See, Eon. Yes, the Eon Foundation is my foundation, ladies and gentlemen. So, oh, by the way, you don't want to play with the EAM Foundation. I know many, some of you are going to be like, I'm going to do it anyway, because that's what ignorant people do. Whew. You can try, but it will be horrible. Okay, now, I got something I want to bring to your attention. Let's get rid of this. Okay, there's a, uh, I'm getting ready to write up those responses to those things that those individuals have. So what I want to show you guys something, we're going to put my James. You know I love that song, James. You know that you could not have done a better song. That's why this is a preparation. This ain't an actual document. So that's why you don't see no names. Preparation, like Preparation H, you know, that stuff your mama put on her lips. I'm kidding, kidding. I don't mean those lips. I mean the other lips she put that on. <laughs> Anyway, I apologize for that. It's late, people. I'm having myself an interesting day. I woke up at 8 o'clock this morning. I actually woke up at 8 o'clock, people. I took some sleeping pills last night because I said by any means necessary, I was going to sleep. I was not going to be up all night. So I only took about four and a half, five sleeping pills. And so I woke up at 8, went to sleep at 10, woke up at 8 this morning. But I woke up droggy and tired because this is the springtime when the weather changes like this. And I told all of you that when the weather changes, that I have a difficult time adjusting. Well, when I told all of you I was sick a couple of weeks ago, that and I wasn't feeling very well and I felt horrible, that's the reason why. It's because the weather was changing. It literally felt like I had pneumonia all over again. If any of you have ever had pneumonia, 
You know how painful that is, especially to breathe. You know how difficult it is. If you have a family member who's been in a hospital with pneumonia, please understand that I feel for them because I understand what that feels like. All right, ladies and gentlemen, most Bibles will read like I uh, would have shown you in a previous video this way. This is James, the, 20, uh, the second chapter, verse 23. This is talking about Abraham. He says, it was fulfilled was the writing that is saying, and Abraham did believe God, and it was reckoned to him or counted to him as righteousness, and he came to be called a friend of God, or a friend of God he was called. Okay, so Abraham believed in God, and he was called God's friend. He's the only one listed in the Bible as God's friend. No other person is listed in the Bible as God's friend. Okay, pay attention to the reason why he was called God's friend. It says, and he believed. If you only believe. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, when it says, and he believed, please understand something. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Did that thing say the authorized version? Wait, where was that? Is that here? Nope, that ain't there. Nope, that ain't it. Uh-uh. Where did you pull it up at? See, it ain't going to do it again. See, do it again. Do it again. I dare you. See, it ain't doing it again. So I don't know how to do that because, well, anyway, that's not the point I want to see. It almost did it. It almost did it, but it didn't do it. All right. Anyway, when it says that he did believe, what you must understand at the time that this man was living, there were no scriptures. There was nothing in writing. There it is. See, it pulled up without me asking it to pull up. Okay, I'm not looking for that. That's just doing the name Abraham. Okay, but what I was looking for is the one where, oh, see, authorized version, see, rendered in the authorized version as Lord. Okay, the word, it says Hebrew word Jehovah, and only other word generally employed to denote the supreme being is uniformly rendered in the authorized version as Lord in all capital letters. So for those of y'all who keep saying, oh, yeah, Jehovah's Witnesses, just put the name Jehovah in the Bible. Please understand that the translators know exactly what was originally in there. And those of you who believe that, that's your problem. Knock yourself out. But ladies and gentlemen, the difference between Abraham and you is Abraham didn't have a single scripture. God made a promise to him. He made a promise to him that his seed would be as vast as the numbers are along the seashore and that his seed was going to come through Sarah. Sarah, a barren woman. At the time, Sarah was 75 years, 75 years old. And she laughed. Thus, her son's name became Isaac, which means laughter. She laughed. 75 years old, <laughs> as dried up as I am. Oh, please, have a baby. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay, so that's the name Isaac. But here's the point. Abraham believed. He put faith in God's word, but he only had the word. He did not have anything tangible. He only had a spoken word where he heard it said. So the idea is faith follows the things heard. Paul says that. Everybody in their grandmama said they got faith. They ain't got no faith. So I want to do. I want. I want y'all to do me a favor. Indulge me for a moment. Then I'm gonna get back to talking about the debt. This is a song I wrote. I, ever since I was a child, I've been hearing people write songs, and they talk about. I wrote a song about God and all this other stuff. I hear people say things like that, and I said, you know what? I'm gonna write me a song, and it took me a good 15 years to complete this song. People, this was not the original. Okay, let's do that, Jay. I like that, Jay. All right, it was, this is not the original. This is not the original thought. This came from that verse. I don't sing, not today, not tomorrow, but I wanna give you guys these words. And I want you to tell me what you think. You know, I'll leave the comments open under this video, only for a short time. I just wanna tell me what you think of the words, not what you think of my saying it. I'm just gonna give you the melody. Jehovah, our Father and our Heavenly Father, we hold you as our dearest friend. Anyway, I, I don't want to sing it. Since we were young, we spoke to you. 
And you have always been right by our side. When others doubt, we do not join them. As our faith in you shall never end. You give your word, no one can change it. And we take heed and we benefit. Jehovah, our heavenly friend, we've waited, wait, wait for our faith to grow. You held our hand and steadied our step, for you knew that we were in all sin. You gave your word and it comes true And we shall never serve no one else but you We see forever, we see eternity And at your side always we shall be You gave your son a holy ransom and he for us a victory won. It's almost over. Jehovah, the only true sovereign, with whom no one could ever contend. Many would try to challenge you, but fail to act. And you will destroy them, and that will be that. We exercise faith in your promises. Your word is true if only we knew that faith comes only when we heed your word. For our faith to grow, we meditate. By our doing so, we prove our faith. So please guide us down the right path. May all serve you is all you ask. May we all have faith and put our trust in you. May that be the thing that we do. Jehovah, our Heavenly Father, sovereign of every best friend. Jehovah, Jehovah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I wrote it. It's called Faith in Jehovah, based on that scripture, because that is the scripture that I hold on to. Why? Because all I ever wanted to do was be his friend. Abraham was his friend because he believed. Okay? Abraham was his friend simply because he believed. See, this don't even want me to save it. Let's get rid of it. It doesn't want me to save the changes. All right. Now, get back to how all of this came about today. Because I told you, the young man that I was talking to, he, let's get rid of you, get rid of you, get rid of you, get rid of you. All right. <clears throat> the young man I was talking to, we were talking about debt. I was actually talking to two people about debt. One person about credit and how credit works in this country. Ladies and gentlemen, the problem is many of you don't understand how debt works and how it operates. So let's go ahead and give you an understanding of debt. Remember, as you know, there is no debt. Do you know why there's no debt? Because while you're in bankruptcy, you cannot accumulate more debt. Okay, please understand that. While you're in bankruptcy, you cannot accumulate any more debt. There is a stay placed on your account so that you can't accumulate any more debt. As Mr. Trafficat stood before Congress on the congressional floor and announced they were in reorganization, Chapter 11, bankruptcy. So they can't accumulate any more debt, nor can they make a profit because they were in a reorganization. What was the reorganization? They went from being a government to an administrative agency. You understand that? It was completely corporatized. That was the whole process in 1929. It did not start in 1933. You all only think it started in 1933. They didn't file bankruptcy 
1933. 1933 is when they recorded the bankruptcy because they couldn't pay any of their creditors. Ladies and gentlemen, all of your debt is public debt. You, you, you do understand that, right? You don't have any debt. All of your debt is public debt. It's dischargeable through the Bureau of Public Debt. That's why it's called public debt. Remember, they say you're a member of the public. You're John Q. Cut public. That's why they got regulations for you, which means you're supposed to be properly discharging your debt. The people who were telling you about the OID process, they were telling you properly, but you people haven't been able to explain it to the agencies properly and the organizations properly. Now, we told you, we're going to suggest it to you again. And I'm going to suggest this. I'm only suggesting this. You know, see the people who didn't want to hear my song who turned tuned out? Good, because they don't need this information. But ladies and gentlemen, you should be sending those bills, copying those bills, and sending them to the who? The treasurer of the state that you were born in or the treasurer of the state that you're in. Let them know that you're a member of the public. This is public debt, and you want to have them take care of this matter ASAP so as to reduce the burden on the public debt. They're going to send you back some junk telling you that they don't handle that. Say, thank you. That's all I needed from you was a letter saying you refuse. And then you send it to the Bureau of Public Debt. Let them know that the state is refusing to handle their obligation. You get that from the Bureau of Public Debt, and the Bureau of Public Debt ain't going to write you back. Now, if you guys please understand, I called the Internal Revenue Service on Friday of last week. And I let them know that, hey, guys, I done sent some documents into you and I ain't heard back from you. Well, what, what the what's wrong with y'all? I said, y'all public organization, y'all y'all government. No, we know they're not government, but y'all government. Y'all can't ignore my letters. Y'all must respond back to my letters. Y'all are under obligation to respond back to my letters. I ain't got no response back from you. Uh-uh. Let me tell you something. I treated them with respect. They did not give me the runaround. They did not give me any bull crap. Now, they tried. They tried to sit, shift the subject. I said, no, I'm not calling about that. I'm calling about the fact I ain't got no response back. Ladies and gentlemen, guess what? I got my responses. I was just calling to see what the response was going to be from them about not getting the response back because I was just testing my theory that they have to respond back to you. The treasury is the same. So if you mailed something to the Treasury and you have your receipt showing you mailed it, call, file a complaint. Contact the, uh, what is that thing called? The Office of Investigations, the OIG, with the Treasury. Let them know that the employees are violating the policy of the Department of the Treasury. They are not responding back to you. They have to give you a letter. They have to give you a response. Do you want to know why you want a response back from them? The same as you got a response back from the state treasurer's office saying that they don't handle that, that there is not a process. If they say they, they don't handle it, they don't have a process for it, excuse me, this is public debt. Of course you handle this. You're the treasurer for the state. The state handles all public debt. We are in a state of emergency, or do you not recognize the banking holiday declared in 1933 that Congress has said is still ongoing? So until we come out of that banking holiday, oh yeah, you're going to recognize this public debt and you're going to recognize my right to discharge this public debt. Are you guys understanding and hearing what I'm saying? You, you guys want to be empowered, but do you not understand that this information is already out there for you? Do, do you not understand that? That it's already there for you? You're supposed to know this. So understand. All of your debt is public debt, and as public debt, it's dischargeable. Now, as I'm going to tell you, and, and you need to understand this because most of you don't understand this. Oh, so we're going to go here. <clears throat> Hold on. Come on now. Now, I want you to pay attention to these words right here. Go back and look at your mortgage. Hey, guys, I didn't pull this up. I just typed in tender of payment. 
Go back and look at your mortgage and see if your mortgage tells you that you must pay in credit card, cashier's check, certified check, money order. Go ahead and see what it says you must pay back or what you agreed to pay back in. Go ahead and look at your data trust and see if it says what species you're to pay back in. So ladies and gentlemen, tender your payment. That's the only advice I'm going to give you on that. I can't read it more than that because you guys are not getting it. And I cannot keep speaking about this every other video until you guys get it. It's exhausting. Okay. If tender a payment of an obligation to pay an instrument is made to a person entitled to enforce the instrument, the effect of the tender is governed under the principles of law applicable to tender a payment under a simple contract okay ladies and gentlemen you must understand what tender of payment is unconditional offer to pay the exact amount to satisfy a debt in lieu of actual payment in lieu of actual payment are you guys getting this no 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 y'all are not getting this hold on hold on hold on because y'all not getting it oh my god wait is that all we gotta do oh mama here. You gotta see this. I know that's what some of y'all are saying right now, but it's been there the whole time. You've been hearing me tell you that you must tender payment, and you guys haven't been getting it, and it's not my fault. And I'm gonna bring my James Brown back in because I need my music because y'all stressing me the out, and I gotta stop doing that. But y'all stressing me out, people, and I don't appreciate y'all stressing me out. Y'all trying to cause me a hermit lady, okay? Unconditional offer to pay the exact amount. To satisfy the debt you have to tender payment okay now wait let me make it bigger because y'all just don't understand it and I'm just gonna make it bigger an unconditional offer to pay you're just offering to pay the exact amount to satisfy a debt in lieu of the actual payment in lieu of the actual payment hey y'all remember Lou Grant man I remember Lou Grant man that was a good show Lou Grant Mary Tyler Moore I remember my Lou Grant man Lou Grant was oh you're not talking about that Lou huh okay well anyway in lieu of the actual payment a tender of payment may save the tendering party from the penalty of non-payment if the other party refuses the tender without just cause Please understand, don't nobody, don't nobody say that I haven't given you the information you need to get rid of your debt. People, I'm giving you the hours down money order. Why do you think they work? Because they stand as tender of payment. Notice it's titled tender of payment. The appeals court says that you must tender payment. How to void a check and avoid fraud and unauthorized. Nobody asked them about that. We were only asking, asking, a a a a asking about tendering a payment. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't understand it, keep reading it until you get it because it's right there what you need to do. You need to tender payment, people. That's the only thing you promised was to tender payment. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, stop wasting your time. Hey, the world needs love, y'all. And tender payment. Somebody say you owe a bill, but, but they shut my lights off. I tender payment, they shut my lights off. Ladies and gentlemen, I am not saying don't pay your bills, don't continue to pay your bills as regular, but tender your payment for those large debts. We didn't say that when you get a bill every month, that's not a debt, people. That's a bill. Okay, it doesn't become a debt until it is well past due. Okay, that's when it becomes a debt, and that's the reason many of you are not understanding what a debt is. Somebody sends you a bill, that's not a debt, that's an obligation. It's not even a debt obligation, it's just an obligation. Okay? Yes, you're stressing me out because the information is right there. All you got to do is focus on the words, people. And...
Just focus on the words. Okay? If only you guys knew how important words are. You need to understand when you're reading case law, when you're reading what these judges are saying, you need to understand they're using words. It's called word art. Wait, let's do that. Let's show you guys that. If only you guys know how stressed I am right now because I do this video and you're finally seeing why he keeps saying tender payment, that you need the tender payment. I mean, it sounds like he's talking about chopping wood, but he ain't talking about chopping wood. He's talking about you. Tender! Oh, that's not that word. That's timber. Oh, God, that's what I be. I had it all wrong. See, that's why it bothers me. Okay, nobody asked nobody what tenderize me. Now, many of you going to go look at the UCC and look, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, that's because I didn't put the T. I put ender. Okay. I have forgot to tap on the T. So whatever. Okay, but it still worked out, didn't it? Understand. I just put in debt obligation, right? Now watch this. A collateralized debt obligation. Nobody asked for a CDO, but you'll find out this deals with the OID. Okay. CDOs, that's exactly what the OID process 1099s are all about. Okay, what is debt obligation? Definition, loans, bonds, leases, and other debt instruments owned by a corporation. Debt obligations are carried on a company's books as a liability. Okay, what you receive is a bill. It's an obligation. It becomes a debt obligation when it is past due when they report it. See, pay attention. Mortgage-backed securities are debt obligations. You can tender payment to pay that mortgage-backed security debt obligation. Get out of the way. Nobody asked you to pop up in here. Okay, now watch this. We did word art. Does anybody know what word art is? Let's do definition. Okay, an expression or application of human creative skill and imagination, typically in a visual form, such as painting, sculpture, producing works, and appreciation primarily for their beauty and emotional power. No, ladies and gentlemen, we're not talking about that type of art. We said word art. This thing said art. We're looking for word art. Okay. And we're not talking about, see, look at what they did. They done just took, look at what, do you see what Google done went and did? And this, is this Google? No, this is Bing. Bing, just as bad as Google. Okay. Word art is the same as word play. And the, um, as a matter of fact, Let's do this. Uh, let's do this. Let's let you know what the courts are using so that you guys get it. Let me turn on the light on my keyboard. Okay, because see, what happens is that it's dark right now. The term of a court is the legally prescribed period. No, nobody asked, I said, and I know I spelled terminology wrong. Uh, where are we at? It didn't like it? No. Nope, that's. Oh, I see why it did that. Oh, by the way, the song in the background, I don't know that song. Yeah, let's do the tenets of legal terminology. Ugh. See, now it's going to do the definition of tenets. Let's get rid of definition and do it that way. 
Hey, the most beautiful. There's Prince, y'all. Okay, tenant. Definition of tenant. No, see, they're still doing the same thing. We need legal terminology. Ah, dictionary. So I got to get rid of tenants because tenants is going to kill me. All right, legal term. Uh-oh, eagle terminology. Nobody wants eagle terminology. We want legal. Okay, legal terminology. In 1974, a group of legal interpreter experts convened in Michigan to develop a manual to be used in training legal interpreters. The experts worked from a list of commonly used legal terms and created what they hoped to be standardized translations of these terms, i.e. legal terminology. This is what the courts are doing. 100 of the most common legal terminological terms. I'm going to do that one. But I'm going to go a glossary of terms commonly used in court. And ladies and gentlemen, while we go to this bing, because we're waiting on bing, waiting for bang, 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 bang. Sorry, I couldn't stand that, that character when he was on American Idol and everybody made that stupid song as if it was the best thing that ever happened. <sighs> Lord, has mercy. Okay. This is NewYorkCourts.gov. What needs to be said is you guys need to understand, they declared bankruptcy. All of your debt is public debt. As long as all of your debt is public debt, oh, it's going to open it up in PDF exchange. I can live with that. 100 most commonly used legal terms. This is a glossary over here. Okay. Abstract of judgment, an official copy of the contents of a civil judgment. But, ladies and gentlemen, these are legal terms. It doesn't, this is not talking about words. This is talking about terms. OK, these are the terms that you hear them use all the time. OK, bail. Oh, and the stuff I told you guys about securing a bond, uh, protecting yourself by bonding yourself just in case you get arrested or anything so that there is no such thing as you having to post bond. All you got to do is post the actual bond. OK, so these are legal terms. They have their own definition. Their definition, is that fiduciary? Yep, uh-huh. Okay, these are their legal terms with their legal definitions. Okay, and look how far this junk go down. Okay, a writ, okay? So here you are, a warrant in distress to assert a claim to property held by another as satisfaction of a debt or in lieu of performance of an obligation. A warrant in distress, ain't that something? Now, why did I stop on that? And something just said, stop, and I stopped. A warrant in distress. Oh my God, is that like a damsel? No, I think a warrant in distress might actually help people. I think by seeing that term, they might be able to come up with something unique. You understanding me, people? All right, let's go. Um, a minor, an infant or a person under the age of legal competence, one under 18. Now we know a minor is an infant. Let's see if we can find the word infant and then we're going to go on, okay? No, nope, of course they didn't give us infant. That would be too easy, wouldn't it? So there you guys go. Legal terminology. This is the, what this is what the court is using against you. This is how the court is hitting you and hammering you in the head. This is what you're not getting, okay? And here you go. Let's see if we can find infant here. Nope, no infant. Oh, there it is. An individual who has not yet attained the age of 18, a child. Now, we know better than that, don't we? But do you hear this? An infant is an individual who has not attained the age of 18, a child. Uh-uh. Child, we know that a child is not an infant. An infant and a child, these are their own names. And if we look up child, we'll find a different meaning. Okay. And do you see this is New York? Okay. In camera, in the judge chamber, out of the presence of the jury, the public, and often 
the attorneys. Ladies and gentlemen, you know how they tell you you want to do it in private? That means in camera. Many of you didn't know that. Now you know. So when they talk about you want to have it heard outside the public, you don't need to say outside the public. You just say in camera. Okay. All right. There you go. That's your legal terminology. That's what they're killing you on. Let's get back to this dead thing, shall we? Now, what have we learned tonight, children? Oh, he called us children. That's right, because you come here to learn, okay? You can't teach adults. Adults are too hard-headed. So you must have the mind of a child in order to learn. And many of you guys are too stubborn to learn. That's why you're not learning nothing. But when you take on the mind of a child, you're willing to absorb. Your mind becomes a sponge, and you take on the information. We learned that all debt is public debt. That's right. And since all debt is public debt, any of your old debt, your old bills, you should be sending to the treasurer for your state. That's right. And when the treasurer for your state does not respond and you don't demand anything of him, you just say, I'm only going to give you 14 days, 14 calendar days to process this. And I know you're busy, but it should only take you about 14 calendar days and about five minutes to process these documents. So I'm only going to give you 14 calendar days to process this. If I don't hear from you, I'll have to call in and find out why. And you make them give you something in writing so that you can send it to the Treasury saying that this is what I got in writing. They're saying that they will not process this debt, that they do not handle this debt, that they are not responsible for the public debt associated with this account. The banking holiday says different. And the current regulations for the United States regarding the public debt says different. I'm needing to discharge this debt and they're interfering. Ladies and gentlemen, I would even bring administrative complaints such as an administrative complaint. What's an administrative complaint? Can you tell me? Well, ladies and gentlemen, administrative complaint is real simple. This is an administrative complaint. That's why you do it administratively. Now, it will be called that later. Not right now. It will be called that later when I get ready to finish it because I just started on it. I'll finish it tomorrow, but that's what it's going to be called. And then I will send it out to that organization. Okay. I prefer to use my form because I don't want to use their form. Their forms usually limit us. Okay. But this is me letting you guys know. Ladies and gentlemen, by the way, this is my song, okay? Okay? That's war! And war is singing how much the world is a ghetto. All right. Now we got a little bit about debt taken care of. I am so glad that we finally got that out of the way because... I've been trying to explain that to you guys for months now, for years now. Take a look, all the way back to 2011. I've been doing video trying to explain that there is no money. And then there, there is no debt, people. All the debt is public debt, but because we're in a banking holiday, none of the debt can accumulate. So that means the public debt is not the public debt. Remember, in 1998 through 2000, the government's books were balanced. They had a $500 billion surplus. How did that happen when we were trillions of dollars in debt prior to that? They gave Bill Clinton the credit for that, y'all. He took the credit for that when you didn't know it, the A for V process took the credit. Ladies and gentlemen, stop calling your stuff A for V. Okay? Hold on. Let me let y'all know, because many of y'all don't know. Wake up. Wake up. Accepted for value, UCC. Stop listening. Stop listening. See, it never wants to listen when you want it to listen. Ladies and gentlemen, stop using the symbol A, the letter V, and the number four. Okay? 
Do your research on accepted for value. Remember, there must be consideration. I've always told you, repeated this, every contract must include value and consideration. Okay? There must be value. There must be consideration. This is UCC. Accepted for value is Uniform Commercial Code. And by the way, the first thing that came up was what? Cornell Law University. Why? Because it is the Uniform Commercial Code. Okay? You don't have to study this. It's not necessary. You just have to know that you have this right. Okay? Look, enforcement of instruments. I keep telling you, you have to enforce your instrument if they say they're not accepting it. Guess what you must do? You must follow through. You must call. You must speak with the supervisor. You must be considerate. You must be patient. You must be respectful. If you're not respectful, you are denying the administrative process any option of working in your benefit, which means the court does not have to give you any type of justice, administered justice, because it's an administrative system. So you want to be respectful. <laughs> I don't want to be respectful. And you're not going to get nothing if you're not respectful. Okay, don't watch this stuff, okay? Do not watch this stuff, okay? This stuff ain't going to benefit you whatsoever, okay? I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Do not go here to find out nothing about no accepted for value. You can go here because my boy, Billy Bob Thornton, Bill Thornton with 1215.org, okay? I respect Mr. Thornton. Why? Because he gives you facts and conclusions of law, okay? Now, again, sometimes, pay attention, pay attention. Sometimes people give their opinions. Okay? Sometimes people give their opinions. All right? So let them give their opinion. Oh, and then when they add scripture, I don't, uh-uh, sorry, don't have no respect for that. But what I want you guys to do, pay attention to the definitions, not the opinions. Let them explain the definition. Become an expert at that. Learn what that is and then enforce your instrument. Don't become a law enforcement officer. Become an instrument enforcer. Talk to supervisors. Take them to court and say, no, I followed the law. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, it is later than I thought. It's after 8 o'clock. The world is a ghetto and war is letting y'all know. I got to go, y'all. I've been up for 12 hours. I'm going to go and go lay down because I'm tired, y'all. I'm tired. Been sitting up here stressing about y'all, worrying about y'all. I'm tired, y'all. So y'all have a good day. I hope you gained some information from this video. If you didn't, I don't know what I'm doing. All right. Goodbye.